Welcome to Thy Precious Jewels. This is your host, Dr. Mobola Jeffries. I hope you enjoy your visit with us today. Please feel free to follow us for regular inspirational word and scriptural insight. It is always a pleasure to see you. So thank you for the honor. Thank you for having me. Um, the theme for this meeting is perfection of blessing. I dwelt upon it a bit, um, thinking what exactly um, was in the mind of God for this ministry when he gave the theme that he gave uh, to you. And I had to reach out yesterday just to confirm again um, what the Lord wanted me to tell you. So the anchor scripture for your meeting is Psalm 138 verse 8. The King James Version says, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hands. Typically as Christians, we, we pick on a scripture. And if we're not careful, we give a traditional meaning to the scripture without asking God, how did, how did this scripture come about? Is there any new message I need to grab from, from this scripture? Now, the individual who was praying there, we all know to be David. David was going through a very tough time in his life. And if you look at the life of David and how he ended up, you will understand the fact that he was just, he was just pouring his heart out to God. God had chosen this man without him doing anything. God had approved of him without him doing anything. You see, whether David prayed this prayer or he didn't pray this prayer, God had already had a plan. One of the things I've discovered about my sisters, and when I say my sisters, I'm talking majorly women from African origin, from minority backgrounds, that's what we call them in the UK. We have an idea, or we have this belief about, about who we are to God. And that's why what Sister Bukola said kind of resonated with me. Who are we to God and who is it? Who is it? The scripture says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. My sisters who are on this line, how many of you waited until you got to labor word before you bought baby things? If you've had children. How many of you waited until the baby came out and then the baby started saying, please, can I have a nappy? Can you please give me a baby grow? Can I get, you know, a, 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 a milk, a bottle of milk? No, no, no. We have formed an opinion that until you push and pray and fight and scream and cry that God wouldn't sort things out. If I have a message for you today, it is just to let you know that God is not, ir is not irresponsible. He is not an irresponsible father. I put that in block letters in my notes and I thank God that we already had that message delivered even before I came on. The message version of Psalm 138 verse 8 says, Finish what you have started in me. Finish what you have started in me. Let me ask you, sisters. You can imagine you left your drive at home and you've got your four-year-old in the car and you drove halfway to his school. And then he says, mom, please don't drop me on the roadside, please. I'm, I'm begging, please, please. I'm sure you're probably going to pack at the station or services and say, are you all right? Do you have temperature? <laughs> Why? The, David was praying from a place of, ah, oh, I don't understand what is happening here. In case you've forgotten me, God, please, can you please don't abandon me here? I think as women, as women of this age, in this generation, 
we have gone way beyond that. We are, it's, it's a lovely prayer to pray. Perfect that which you have started in me. It is a lovely prayer to pray. But I will tell you the circumstances in which that prayer can be meaningful in the ears of God. One of the reasons we pray prayers, we attend night vigils, we fast, we sow seed, and nothing is happening is simply because whatever you're saying, God is like, please, can you explain to me what she's trying to say? Because it's not making sense. And God does not answer prayers that do not make sense to him. Let me move on quickly. Let me move on quickly. When we say that God should perfect blessings, you can only make that demand based on what God told you. You can only make that demand based on what he told you. Let me explain. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 to 31 tells you what the blessing of God is. And if you don't know what the blessing of God is, then you don't know what you are asking for him to perfect. So Genesis 1, 28 to 31, the new century version says, God blessed them and said, God blessed them and said, God blessed them and said. So the blessing came in the saying, when we're talking about blessing, a lot of people talk about houses, they talk about shoes, they talk about job, they talk about promotion, they talk about businesses. Can you see where we missed it? Right, right here, at the point of what God called blessing. God blessed them and said, have many children, grow in number, fill the earth, be its masters, rule over the fish in the sea, over the birds in the sky, over every living thing that moves on earth. That is blessing. Is that what we've prayed for tonight? Maybe not 100%. We have just focused, we've just picked 1% of what is God's blessing and we're hammering on it. Meanwhile, the perfection and the completion of this blessing is awaiting what God has said. The instruction is given us. If you register for a course, it does not matter how well you study every model in other people's courses until you complete your models in your course. You cannot pass that course. What am I saying? If you're asking for God to perfect his blessing, this is the blessing that God has given you. Have many children, grow in number, fill the earth, be its master. Now I'm going to stop at be its master and I explain to you, your job is part of mastering the world. Your business is part of mastering the world. Your ministry is still part of mastering the world because all of these things are the things that God has put in place for us to actually take charge of the world where we're in. So God wants you to be productive. So if you're here and you're trusting God for the fruit of the womb and you are making declaration about getting pregnant, yes, that is part of the blessing. Grow in number. Some of you have not managed to produce one like yourself. And when you're talking about producing one like yourself, you're talking about that in ministry, that in business, that within your marriage. It, it, it covers quite a lot of areas, but our prayers are always, God, you know, give me a job, give me a husband, give me money, give me a house, and that's it. And that's it. So even we are not looking for the perfection we're praying for because you have not explored every room within the apartment, within the house that God has given you. So what is God's verdict about this blessing? He says, look, I have given you all the plants that have grains for seeds. So God is saying that you should multiply, but he's telling you, I have given you the seed. You cannot multiply without seeds. He says, I have given you seeds. So if you're not multiplying right now, it is not because you are waiting on God for seed. Seed is available. He says, I have given you all the trees for food. You have seed. 
you have food, you have green plants, you have everything. He says, and it happened. God looked at everything he had made and it was good. So if God says they are sorted, what exactly are we waiting for? What exactly are we waiting for? The blessing of God is in what he has said. It's in the instruction he has given you. Now, let me share with you the reason, the common reasons why people don't have perfection. Let me share with you the common reasons, because if you don't know the reasons why, then we're going to be praying for the next 15 years and we're still going to have the same answers. Ignorance. Ignorance. My husband shared a story with me um, years ago, early in his ministry. He was in Nigeria at the time and he was invited as a guest minister to um, a, a crusade. So he arrived at the venue and just went into the building and sat down like every, everybody else. Of course, the ushers led him to where he sat and the service, if you're familiar with the Nigerian environment, you, you will understand the scenario. So the service went on and the choir, they were singing praise worship, singing praises, singing praises. Then they would do special number. Then they would sing praises again. And then the pastor kept saying, we're sorry, we're still waiting for the man of God. The man of God will soon be here. He, you know, I'm aware that he has left. Um, I'm aware that he got on a, a, a ride and he should be on his way. We don't know what has happened to him. He came up the first time, announced, then the choir started singing again. Then eventually he came up to announce again and saw my husband where he was sat. And then he called the usher and said, that's the, that's the guest minister. How long has he been sitting there? And the usher said, well, he's been there since, sir. What is the essence of that? Apparently, he was delayed. But he wasn't delayed. He's been sat there for a long time. The problem for some of us who are praying for perfection of blessing is because we do not know the identity of what we are asking God for. You don't know. You don't know. What are you expecting? What does it look like? How do you identify it? You don't know. You're saying, God, prosper me, prosper me, prosper me. God says, I sent the business six months ago. You walked past it and you went somewhere else. God is not irresponsible. You ask him, he makes provision. So the perfection was supposed to have taken place six months ago, but because you couldn't identify or recognize the blessing, you walked past it. You walked past it. Can you identify or recognize what you're asking for? I don't know if there's single people here, but definitely single ladies are going to be listening to this video. You've been praying for a husband. Who is he? Who is the man you're praying for? What does he look like? Where is he from? I ask people. We don't just, you know, we uh, prayer. Prayer is. It's supposed to be just a conversation with God. It is not a one-way thing that you just throw up there and then you're waiting for angels. No. What exactly are you waiting for? I love it when a woman can tell me, God said, this is what is going to happen. Who are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? It is easier to identify, to recognize when you have information. Now, before I got married to my husband, I was praying. I knew where what God told me I'll be doing in my life. So what did I do? When the men who were coming at that time, there was quite a few of them. When they come, all I ask God is, who's this one? Who's this one? Who's this one? At the time when my husband and I became friends, I had eight people who were trying to marry me. And I tell you, my dear sisters, when he came and we started talking, I asked God, who is this? And God said to me, this is the man who will equip you to do what I've asked you to do. Hey, 
I said, ah, okay. Then I started paying attention to him. You are asking for God to perfect, perfect what you have started. What is the destination? How do you know that you've reached the perfection when you don't even know what the end result looks like? Some of you are saying, Father, prosper me. Father, I need a new level in my job. God, and when you pray for a new level, you're thinking about applying to another organization. Meanwhile, where you are is the perfection. It's just that you need to go for one or two courses so that you can be allocated a higher level. Can you see what I'm saying? Praying the wrong way is one reason why we're not getting answers. God is not wicked. God is not irresponsible. Can you recognize what it is that you're praying for? If you can't recognize it, if you can't identify it, then you will be able to know whether you've gone there. Some of you are praying for perfection. God says, oh, girl, that happened eight years ago, actually. The perfection you're asking me about happened eight years ago. Why don't you move on to the next thing? Another reason why we don't have perfection of blessings is because we're distracted. We're distracted because you don't even know where the blessing is. Some of us are praying for a house. We're praying for car. You're praying for money. God says, that's fine. You're asking for perfection of money, but I've given you a job and the money you are asking for is going to come from that, that particular job. It's only that you need to manage your money, manage the money. It's not looking for more money. It is managing the one you have and not committing it to useless purposes. I, I wish genuinely that my sisters on this, you know, watching this video will be able to get this. Do you know how many prayer points we're sending towards heaven every day? I mean, is God wicked that you are born again? You are a child of God. You are faithful. Yet you have the same prayer point for three years. And God hasn't had the time to answer. No, now. That's not who God is. That's not who God is. What exactly is a blessing? You're fasting for a job. All you need to know is where your services will be needed. You're fasting. You're saying, God, increase my business. God says, all you need to do, girl, for this business to be perfect is to change the way you address your customers. Can you see? Answers are here with us. God says the instruction I've given you is to multiply. God says multiply, then he gives seeds. He says multiply, he gives seeds. For every instruction God tells you to do, he makes the provision available. But if you're not seeing the seeds and you're not using the seeds, there will be no multiplication. There is no angel Gabriel that is going to come from heaven to come and suddenly move your business forward. The instruction that you have is in there. He says subdue the world. That means be on top of everything, be on top of your accounting, be on top of your, you know, your, your human relations, be on top of this. There is no magical, you know, we, we pray vague prayers and we expect vague answers. God says, subdue, subdue, subdue. That means when you have a business and your business is supposed to open at 9 a.m., you are not trying to find your way there at two minutes past nine. Because the first customer that God has ordained to come to you, you that day, got there at two minutes to nine and they were waiting for you to open. That is how to subdue. It is not an angel that is going to come and lay hands. God has already given you seed. He has already given you fruit. He has already made provision for what you will eat. He has already made provision. He has sorted you out. You just know what you need to do and do it. And you move forward. One more reason why we do not experience per uh, perfection is that we're trying to bring God into what he didn't say he will do. Did God say he would do it? My husband says that prayer is a spiritual court of law. When you go to court, what do you do? You present your evidence. When you go to court, what do you do? You present your evidence. If the judge believes in, in your evidence, if your evidence aligns with the law, then you get the judgment in your favor. My dear sisters, 
Did God say he will do what you are believing him for? That perfection you are asking for, is it in, in the list of what God says he will do? When people tell me that they're praying for something, I ask them, please, which scriptures promised you what you are asking for? Do you know the scripture that promised you what you are asking for? That is your evidence. That is your evidence. Without that, your case will be thrown out. God said, I will increase you. God said, no evil will befall me. God said, no plague will come near my dwelling. God said, I shall not cast my young. God said, I love praying. It is no surprise that the two books that God has helped me to release as an hard copies, the prayer manual. Why? I, I throw God's word back at him. I always do. God said, God said, people pray without scriptures. How can you? I mean, how can you? How good are your words? How good are your words? How credible are your words? They change anyhow. But give God his word. Give God his word. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how many married women are here. Your husband says, I'm going to get you a car for Christmas. Then Corona happened. Then he changes his mind. That's us. That's humans. But with God, that word does not change. You give it to him and he says, I will do it. He will do it. So what did God say about the perfection you're asking for? What did God say? God, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, it says, God can bless you with everything you need and you will always have more than enough. So God can do it, but will he do it? Look at the answer in 1 John 5, 14. God's words translation says, we are confident that God listens to us if we ask for anything that has his approval. A lot of us quote the scriptures. We will hear us if we ask. No, don't stop there. Don't stop there. If it has his approval. Did God tell you that you can have this thing that you're asking for? If he said so, yes, pray. Yes, ask for perfection. But if you cannot find a basis of it in the word of God, can you just drop that prayer point? Because you will never have it. You will never have it. Somebody says to me, there is a man I'm trying to, you know, I love and uh, I believe God wants me to marry him. My dear sister, that is not written in the scriptures. It says, oh, I will have the desires of my heart. Yes, desire of your heart. That is fine. Desire of your heart. As long as it's not God's desire for you to marry that man, you can pray from now till next year. It won't happen. Some of us want to, you know, for instance, one of the commonest things people ask to, for instance, relocation, you want to relocate or you want to get a new job. That's fine. God says he will bless the work of your hand. There is no way in the scripture where he tells you he's going to be at that organization. So what you need to be praying is where God wants you to be, not giving him a destination or a location. Can you see how we miss it? And then we behave as though God doesn't hear. You want to go to South, South Africa. God says the destination is Afghanistan. It does not matter how long you pray that God will change your level and you keep calling, you know, South Africa. You will never get an answer to that prayer. And then you will say, oh, God has not perfected it. No, he will not perfect what is not in his will. Have you got proof in the word? where God wants you to be. Have you got proof in the word the blessing is giving you? The blessing he has given you is what God will back up. That is what he will authorize. You're married. You want a child. God stated clearly, clearly in the scriptures, give the word to him. And when you say to him, say, Father, you promised according to your word in so, so, so verse, in so, so, so chapter, that I will not be barren. All I'm waiting for now is the performance of your word. That is the word you keep throwing back at God. Every month you keep saying, God, I'm still waiting. God, I'm still waiting. God, is there anything I need to be doing? You promised that I will have a child. I need instruction. I need the next thing to do. I need you to show me what is stopping me. Can you see why? If you keep in that direction, you're likely to get your answer that somebody who's just praying against enemy, 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 every enemy that does not want me to conceive, every enemy stopping me from conceiving. God will just be looking and say, which enemy for good? 
goodness say your periods are irregular can you sort that out when we're praying for perfection or blessing you need to know you need to know the next reason why people do not have perfection or blessing is that they've got a wrong motive why are you asking for what you're asking for your neighbor has just bought a nissan kashkai and you know you feel oppressed because you're jealous and you want to have the same thing the sister in church who is in your department has just bought a new home and you feel oppressed by it you're like what is she earning i mean i earn more than she earns we can buy a nice house too. Then you turn that into prayer point. The whole of heaven will just be having a good laugh at you. Because that blessing that you're looking for is not yours and your motive is wrong. The Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 3, God's words translation, it says, When you pray for things, you don't get them because you want them for the wrong reason. Simple. Look at the things that you're laying before God this season. Why are you asking? Why are you asking for a new job? Why are you asking? Why are you asking for your business to thrive? Why are you asking? So that you can teach your husband a lesson? Is that why? Is that why? Or so that you can prove it to the people in church that you too can wear Gucci? Is that why? Can you see our motives? There are some prayer points. You can pray them for 16 years. It just goes into voicemail. Or in fact, it goes into junk mail. Because your motive is wrong. One of the reasons why there is no perfection of our blessing is that what we are asking God for is not in the plan of God for us and is not in the plan of God for that time. It's not in the plan of God for that time. When, when sisters contact me and they say, uh, Omobi, I have delay in marriage. I think that is one of the commonest prayer requests I receive. And I ask them, so sorry to hear that. I say to them, so sorry to hear that, sis. Please, can you confirm what age did God say you were going to marry? What age did God say you were going to marry? If you're telling me that you've been delayed on a flight, that means that flight was supposed to leave UK at 7.05. So at 8.22, you can complain about delay. If God has not told you the exact time that you were meant to take off, why are you accusing him of delaying you? Why? What timing has he given you? Most of these people that I'm talking about, they don't have any single information from God about when they were supposed to marry. Yet we accuse him. We tell him he's irresponsible because apparently the time we were supposed to marry has gone past and we haven't married. Are you meant to marry at 23? Some people are meant to marry at 39. And they're fasting, they're sowing seed, they're going for deliverance at 37 plus. And you see how people take advantage of us because we don't have information. When you do not have information, you will suffer. What timing has God given you? My husband and I relocated to a new city. Um, I think it was about 12 years ago. And when we got to the new city, we prayed. We were asking God for where to go to church. And the Lord gave my husband and I even separately, he gave us the same name of a ministry. And then the Lord said to my husband, your stay will not be long there. And God told my husband how long our stay was going to be. So it was a young church and we, uh, we joined and we started doing everything. Trust me, I started singing, you know, going for evangelism. My husband is, you know, very tech. He was helping them with the sound. He was doing this. He was setting up for them. And then they moved to a bigger venue and they needed to do up this venue. And my husband has also got experience in building in the, industry, in the building industry. So he started doing the renovation work for them, blah, 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 blah. Whilst he was doing that, he wasn't working. We had a, a, a little baby and my husband and I agreed that, okay, you stay at home and take care of the child whilst I go to work. And because my husband wasn't going to work, 
and he had the baby, we would keep the baby with the pastor's wife and my husband would go and use his skills to renovate the church. And he would go once he drops me off at work in the morning and once he leaves there, he picks me off from work. Pastor didn't get it at that time that this man, for him to be available to be renovating the church, he's not working. Then pastor then accused my husband of not paying tithes. Oh gosh, it was very messy. But you know, the whole of this drama happened. God, I think it was two years God told us we were going to be at the church. And it culminated in a big blowout just, just at the verge of two years. Because God had already told us that our stay in that church was for two years. My dear sisters, two years and a few weeks was when they inaugurated or whatever. They, they opened, dedicated the new building. And in the process of all the hustle and bustle, people started coming. And pastor then mentioned, you know, that my husband was not paying tithe. He was not committed to the ministry. This was a man. This was the man who single-handedly renovated an auditorium with a little baby and I was working full time. My dear sisters, we felt like what on earth was this? But we were still okay until my husband prayed with a member of the church and that man got the miracle that he desired. And then he went to the pastor and said, hey, pastor, you know, this prayer request I've had for a while now, you know, this brother, brother Dumebe prayed with me and told me, do this, do this, do this. And I did exactly what he said. And, you know, one week and the problem is over. I said, oh, wow. He mentioned that, you know, he's an ordained man of God. And the pastor said, no, he cannot be. God does not ordain people like him. God doesn't call people like him. And this man was like, wow, what is that? And then the pastor went on the pulpit and announced that he did not want anybody in the church to have anything to do with us because we were claiming what we were not. And we were not even committed to the ministry. Oh, it was so traumatic. But my dear sisters, you know why? It was easy for us to deal with this because God had told us that we were with them for two years. We were not praying that God would vindicate us. We left. You need information about timing. So there are many things you will not be hanging around in life. I run a ministry. People work with me. Not everybody working with me in my ministry will be with me for the rest of my life. They won't always be there. So when people start to do this, do that, when there starts to be friction and whatever, I go back to God and I ask, is it time for them to go? That way there is no bitterness. There is no anger. I'm not arguing. I'm not praying unnecessarily. What is the time frame of what God has promised you? And what you're praying about? When did God tell you that he will do it? My dear sisters, information is key. You're praying to God for your business. Information is key. Did God tell you to move your business from face to face to online in April 2021? Do you have that information? If you don't have that information, you will be here praying regarding your store for the next six years and there will be no response. My dear sisters, you need to have a confirmation of the timing of what will be delivered to you. If you don't have that, you will become impatient. You will accuse God. You will just end up upsetting yourself. There is a time in Habakkuk 2, 3. The contemporary English version says, At the time I have decided, my words will come true. At the time I have decided. At the time I have decided, not when you push me, not when you're crying, not when you're shouting, not after you sow a seed. At the time I have decided, what is the timing of what you are expecting? What is the timing? How many of you have time frame? If you'd like information, we're going to pray. I think the last 10, 15 minutes of my ministration is going to be praying with you. You need to know. You want to buy a home. When will you buy it? When will you buy it? When should you apply for a loan? When should you request a mortgage? When? 
I've had my husband instruct me before and says, tell that individual they're trying to apply for a job. They shouldn't do it for the next six weeks. You need information. I remember we went for a meeting in London. It was a church that invited me for a night vigil. So I pleaded with my husband to come along. It's always amazing when he comes along to meetings. I feel one, I feel a lot more comfortable. And two, I believe that the people benefit from his ministration. So I asked him to tag along with me. And during the course, you know, after, after I finished my ministration, I asked, I said, my husband, do you want to have a word with the house? And he just looked at a particular gentleman and he says, what are you chasing? He says, stop chasing. You're looking to go to the US. He says, calm yourself down. Stop applying. Don't even try. He says, in so, 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 I don't know how many months he told that gentleman. He said, they will come and seek you from ab abroad. He says, everything that you're chasing after will be offered to you on a plate without you requesting it. My dear sisters, do you know what that young man said? He confessed. He said it. He said it before the church. Later on, a few months down the line, he said, when my husband said that, he said, ah, one of them, he's trying to, he wants me to sow seed. I'm not sowing seed. It was so funny that that particular night vigil, we sorted our way out to that night vigil. I paid for the hotel for us to stay after we finished the night vigil and we did not collect any honorarium. So for you to know, but this man, because of his experience, he said, oh, he wants me to give money so that there can be activation of the word he has spoken. That was what he said. He said that was what he said when my husband told him. My dear sisters, he was applying to go to the U.S. He wanted to look for a job in the U.S. A few months down the line, he received a phone call out of the blues. And they said, hi, we're calling from this particular organization. We've been monitoring you for two years. We've been following your progress for the past two years. We were just wondering if you would like to join our organization. From UK, from UK, they made him the head for America, for Asia, and for Australia. He did not apply for that job. He was looking for us. This man was looking for us. My husband told him, stop. If the visa he was looking for, the organization sorted everything. He had access to how many countries that he did not look for. There is something about God perfecting his blessing. When the timing is right, some of you are praying. You are just praying, praying, praying. You are praying for six months. You are praying for two years. What timing did God give you? When did he say he will be ready for this to be done? Stop praying. Start asking for information. No matter how, how hard you fast, no matter how much seed you sow, there are some things that will not come to you. They will never come. They won't come. There's a particular scripture. I don't remember that scripture now. Where God was addressing the Israelite. He says, look, you will go through this land. You will go through this land. You will go through this land. He says, don't even fight with the people who are in the land because I will not give it to you. The land belongs to them. Would you want to know how many of your prayer requests do not belong to you? I mean, God is not dumb. Neither is he heartless. How can you be praying for things and you are his child and he won't give them to you? Maybe because they're not yours. You're asking God, perfect this blessing. God, give me that house. God, give me that land. There are many things you'll be asking for. If they're not yours, they're not yours. Our current house, when, when we came to view the house, we had been to view, view a few houses and I just felt uncomfortable. Do you know? When I entered into the London for our current house, the minute my feet touch, I say, hey, I am home. I am home. When they told us the price and they told us what was involved, my dear sisters, I said, Jesus Christ, this house, God. But because God had told me that this was the house, the, the estate agent who brought us to view the house, once he stepped out of the house, I quickly took my shoes off. And I put my feet on the floor of the house and I decree this house is not sold to anybody else. I can only do that because I had information, because I knew it was ours. Let me tell you the rigmarole that happened. There were lots of questions. There were lots of this. In fact, there was a time they were saying, oh, they were making investigations. I should not travel out of the UK. My dear sisters, At that, on that particular time, they said I shouldn't travel out of the UK. I had a conference in Chicago. 
I got on the flight and I went. It was from inside Chicago. I was calling the bank in the UK and go sorted everything without any problem. Why? Because I was asking for a perfection of the blessing that God had confirmed that it belonged to me. What has God confirmed that it belongs to you? Even a fine of, I don't know how many thousands we were supposed to pay for a particular error. God waived it. God waived it. Why? Because this blessing is mine. You're asking for perfection of blessing. Is it yours? Does it have your name on it? Is it within the time frame that God has given you? Do you have the information that you need? And what is your motive for asking for that perfection? Is it to prove a point? Is it to show them? Is it to deal with them? Is it to show people that you too can do it? What is the motive? Now, have you done your part in acquiring what God has promised? That particular blessing, what is your part? The Bible says dominate. When you want to dominate, what do you do? You use force. You use force. You use force. What is your own role? What is your part in what you're praying for? You know, we have wrong expectations of God doing everything. A lot of people are very lazy. As Christians, we're lazy. As Christians, we're lazy. I know we are lazy. The trigger is you do the first step of the cascade. God does the, his own. Let me show something to you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 to 2. Um, it says, Amplified Version, Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 2, it says, Now it shall be, if you diligently listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I am commanding you, the Lord your God will. Did you, did you hear that? It says, if you diligently listen and you obey and you are careful to do then the Lord your God will. But a lot of us are just praying, God do, God do, God do, God do. What happened to those first few parts? If you diligently listen, most of us have not listened because you don't have information. You're not listening. You don't know what you're supposed to do. If you diligently listen, if you have not listened, you cannot obey. If you cannot obey, there is no doing. Can you see the step ladder thing? We just pray and shout. You go to night vigil. Your church does night vigil every last Friday of the month. And you're repeating the same prayer point for eight months. But you won't go to do, do, do. What happened to the first you do? What happens to the parts that you were supposed to do? <sighs> it's not that bad. God is not a bad father. God is not irresponsible. No. See, see, see what happened here. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 17. The common English Bible version. I'm going to read this to you and then we'll, we'll pray. <clears throat> the Bible says, but Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Stand your ground. Watch the Lord rescue you today. How many of you receive instructions like that from your leaders? They give you an impression that everything is okay. We're just waiting for God. It is wrong. It is wrong if your leader cannot give you up-to-date information about what God expects you to do about your case. It is wrong. I don't like it. And I feel that it is another way of punishing our followers, our, our church members, if we're not up to date with hearing God. My dear sisters, you are a leader in your home. Under your husband, if you're married, you are a leader. One of the crucial prayer points you should pray when we finish this meeting is, God, please speak to my husband so he can have information. Moses was telling the Israelites, calm down, the Lord will rescue you. Calm down, the Lord will rescue you. But that was not the right information at that time. The right information. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Get moving. Get moving. Can you see the contradictory information? Moses says, don't worry. Be calm. Stand your ground. God says, move, move. My dear sisters, 
what would have been the perfection of blessing for the Israelite is for them to be delivered. If they stood still and do not move, they would not have been delivered. The progress they need is for them to move quickly because the deliverance that God has planned is ahead. My dear sisters, what is it? What is it that you need to do? Every day you're kneeling down and you're praying. What is it that you need to do? God is waiting for you to do step one, two, three, for him to do step four, six, five, four, five, six, seven, and eight. But you're not doing yours. You're still praying. Prayer will not replace the action. Confession will not replace the action. Sowing seed will not replace your action. Action is action. God said move. God said move forward. God said move forward. My dear sisters listening to me, if you're going to have a perfection of the blessing that you're praying for, there are things you need to do. There are things you need to do. My key words, I'm going to finish with this. My key words for today. Identify what God has given to you. You cannot have anything except God has freely given it to you. Identify it. Know what God has given to you. Familiarize yourself with it so that when you see it, you will know it. When you get to that job interview, you will know that this is yours. When you get to that interview, you know it is yours. When you get to that business, you know it is yours. When you get to that appointment, you know it is yours. When you get to your children's school, you know that is the school that God has given, you know, for, for them to attend. It's not just scattering your, you know, your prayers anyhow. Be targeted in what requests you make. Do your part. Do your part. Feedback to God. Communicate with him and say, God, am I doing the right thing? Is this how I'm supposed to go? Is this what I'm supposed to? Is this where I'm supposed to be right now? And God wants to communicate with you. Then wait patiently. After you've done your part, it is key that you wait patiently. There is no perfection that takes place without patience. When you want to have bake a cake, you just mix the cake, put the cake, you put the flour and the butter and the egg and the sugar and you start eating it. No. There is need for patience. After you've done all, then you stand and then wait for the salvation of the Lord. I'm just going to lead you to pray, you know, over the next few minutes. So my dear sisters, I want you to just, just appreciate the Lord for the privilege you have even to, to listen to his word, to listen and partake of this, because this is an instruction that the Lord has given. There is no reason why God is a wicked God. There's no reason why he does not answer us. There's no reason why God wants you to have all these things because he made a declaration. He says you should be fruitful. How can he says be fruitful and then take away from you the power to be fruitful? You're going to pray this morning and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity I have to be able to hear your word, to be able to partake of this. Father, I thank you, Lord, for all my sisters. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, because the entrance of your word is what gives light. A lot of people are in the dark. They are praying, but they are in the dark. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for instructing our hearts this morning. We give you praise in Jesus' name we have prayed. I wanted to pray right now and say, Father, open my eyes to see clearly the ground you have allocated to me, the ground you, you have given for my possession. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus, that you will open my eyes. You will help me to see, Lord, the things you've given to me so that I will not be making requests. I will not be praying, Lord, regarding lands that are not mine, regarding possessions that are not mine. In the name of Jesus, because the things that you've freely given to me, I have access to. But the ones that you've not freely given to me, Lord, it does not matter how much I desire. It does not matter how much I pray. It does not matter how much I fast or sow seeds. They are not mine. For this reason, the this morning, Lord, I pray you will open my eyes, Lord, to see clearly the possessions you've given to me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You will now go ahead and say, Father, point me in the direction of whatever I need to do to release me from where I am and take me to where I need to be. Whatever you need to do, whatever is step you need to take, receive this morning in the name of Jesus. Receive direction this morning. Father, I pray this morning for direction direction, what I need to do, where I need to go, how I need to go about it, whether I need to speak to somebody, whether I need to arrange to meet people, whether I need to change my location, whether I need to change my, my view. Father, I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Many times we accuse God of abandoning us. 
when in fact we are the ones responsible for the delay. I wanted to say to God this morning, I'm sorry for the times I've looked at my own answers instead of focusing on your answers and I've accused you of being irresponsible. Lord, I'm sorry this morning. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you said if we confess our sins, uh, you are faithful and just enough to forgive and to show mercy. Father, this morning, Lord, I pray for my sister and everybody under the sound of my voice that, Father, Lord, they have set their, their eyes on answers that are not yours. Father, I'm asking that you be merciful unto them this morning. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Pray that the Lord will give you the ability to be patient. For to, to wait for the perfection of that which the Lord has spoken. A lot of times we're rushing. We're rushing ahead of us. Many people go into wrong marriages, wrong relationship because they just want to get married. I just want to get married. I just want to have a child. They go to any extent. I want you to pray this morning and say, Father, I receive patience to wait. I receive patience to wait. I receive patience to wait. In the name of Jesus, I receive patience to wait after I have done what I'm supposed to do. I receive the patience to wait, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Pray that the Lord would awaken your senses and alert you to the timing of your manifestation. It is important. Otherwise, you're just going to be ramming the doors of heaven when there is no answer. You'll just be ramming the doors of heaven. Say, Father, I await Lord God Almighty, a right sense within my spirit within my spirit to be alerted to the timing of heaven in the name of Jesus. Your timing is right. Your timing is perfect. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, it doesn't matter how much I'm in a hurry. Whatever you will give me, you will give me at your own timing. You said you would do it at your own time. Father, I receive, I align my timing with you. I align my timing with the timing of heaven. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name, we have prayed. Promise the Lord today that you will get up and move forward. You will get up and move forward. You're not going to be cowardly regarding the steps you need to take. Say, Father Lord, I've been resting, waiting on you whilst you've been waiting on me. Whatever I need to do, Father, I am standing up right now and I'm moving forward. I'm going ahead and I'm doing what I need to do. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Finally, I am aware that yes... There are ways in which the enemy oppresses. I'm not saying that the devil does not try, but sincerely when you're in line with God, it is easy for you to know when it is the enemy. So we're going to spend the next one minute and we're going to pray. You're going to break the hold of every power that is holding you back, that is withholding the right information from you, that is stopping you from having access uh, to the information you need for your progress. I want you to pray right now and say, Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, uh, I break the hold of every power. That is holding me back. Uh, everything that is depriving me of the information I need for my next level. Everything that is depriving me of the information I need to perfect the blessing of God in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, tonight I pray for my sisters. I ask, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will break them free, Lord, of every power that is restraining, every power that is hindering, every power that is limiting. In the name of Jesus, I pray especially, Lord, because they have received information now, whatever they need to do, Father, to be able to go to that level where there is perfection of that blessing, I receive for them. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.